All right. Hello, and welcome to the last presentation of the uh, of the conference. Um, this is the search support for minority languages with Trey Jones from the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, Trey is the senior software engineer at the foundation and is working within the search team. Um, they build tools to help pe people discover knowledge on Wikipedia and its sister projects by providing tools and infrastructure, both for readers and for expert users. And it's all about search features on MediaWiki. And they are particularly focused on supporting underserved Wiki communities. So uh, hopefully this will be useful to you and maybe to try as well to uh, see what sort of comments and feedback you might have. Just to say, this was originally um, pitched as a lightning talk. Uh, so we will have quite a short presentation at the start, uh, followed by a fair bit of time for questions and answers. Um, so please do prepare your questions as we go along, or even uh, have the questions ready now um, so that we can tackle them straight away after the presentation. Um, the comments on YouTube are live, I believe. Uh, I think they're on slow mode, but we'll keep a close eye on them. And of course, there's also the Etherpad where you can ask questions as well. And with that, I'm handing over to Trey. Hi, hey, hi everybody. Um, so I want to talk to you today about ways that you can potentially help improve on Wiki search for your favorite languages. Part of my job at the Wikimedia Foundation is to work on language specific processing for search. And to do that, I usually need help from speakers of the language I'm working on. So I wanna give you a brief overview of some of the kinds of language processing we do uh, to try to answer any questions that you have about search and invite you to share ideas on how to improve search in your language. So um, the most basic function of a search engine is to take words from a query and try to find documents that contain those words or related words. Of course, uh, getting computers to, underhand, to understand language um, is almost never simple, but the smarter we can make our search engine about a particular language, the better the search results can be. So let's look at some of the ways that we do process text to make a search engine smarter. Uh, one of the first steps in language processing for search is called tokenization, which is deciding what counts as a word. Uh, in most European languages, it's usually pretty straightforward. However, there are still some edge cases such as camel case, underscores, hyphenation, words with punctuation in them, and other things. And in each of these cases, we have to decide whether we want to treat these as one word or more than one word. In languages without spaces between words like Chinese and some other East Asian languages, we have to perform segmentation, which is what we call tokenization when it's really, really hard. Normalization is another important early processing step. Uh, the most common form of normalization is just lowercasing, because usually we don't care whether a word is uppercase or lowercase when we're searching. However, there can be complications. Uh, in Turkish, the usual versions of upper and lowercase i are actually different letters and have corresponding upper and lowercase forms. In Irish, uh, consonant mutations can add a T or an N to the beginning of a word, usually with a hyphen, unless the first letter of the word is capitalized. And in this example, because the initial N is lowercase and the A is uppercase, the whole word is lowercase as a form of the word father, um, and the N is separated by a hyphen. If the initial N is capitalized, it's treated as part of the core word and everything is lowercase as a form of snake. Uh, other kinds of normalization include removing unwanted diacritics, though what counts as unwanted depends on the language. As a general rule of thumb, uh, if it's in the alphabet, I tend to leave it alone, though Slovak speakers disagreed and made me change it. Um, here we have an example in English where all diacritics are ignored. In Swedish, the A with a ring, which is used in Swedish, is kept, but all the others are removed. And in Slovak, as I mentioned, um, even though these are all Slovak letters, the diacritics get removed because that's what Slovak, ser Slovak searchers expect. A final language specific example of normalization comes from Serbian, which is written on Wiki in both Latin and Cyrillic. Uh, so as an example, we would transliterate the word for language from Cyrillic to Latin as part of the Serbian normalization process. A very useful language specific processing step that unfortunately is not available for every language is stemming which tries to reduce words to a stem or base form. The main goal of stemming is for related forms of a word, like here we have hopes, hoped, and hoping, uh, to all be transformed to the same stem, in this case hope, so that searching for one finds all the others. We do have some support for Irish stemming that handles consonant mutations and nouns, so these three forms of the word for speech all stem to the same base form. Obviously the level of difficulty for stemming varies a lot by language, but even some basic stemming can improve search results. 
Stop words are words that you mostly want to ignore when searching. Uh, they're usually common words that have a grammatical function and don't carry much meaning. So for example, in English, if you search for identification of languages, you would want to find the page on language identification, even though of is not in the title. Stop words are usually not completely ignored though, just discounted because we still favor exact matches when searching and because there are always some weird edge cases like a UK band that's called the the. English has about 30 stop words configured while Irish has about 110. Irish also has a separate configuration to treat H, N, and T as stop words. So the constant mutation forms we saw earlier will get ignored. Um, this is a neat example of how lower casing, tokenization, and stop words all work together to remove those constant mutation prefixes. I wanna to briefly touch on some miscellaneous language specific tools that we have used or developed. Uh, we can handle elision, particularly where stop words are contracted onto other words, such as in Irish and some Romance languages. Uh, the Chinese language wikis allow both simplified and traditional characters, which can be intermingled in the same document and even in the same sentence, which makes searching a mess. Uh, but we map everything to simplified characters, which allows our segmentation tools to divide the text into words and allows easier searching between simplified and traditional text. Uh, Khmer is one of my favorite uh, examples because there is a correct way to write a given Khmer syllable, but it's often the case that putting the characters in a different order will give you an identical visual result. Uh, our search engine doesn't know that these are variants of the same word though, so I'm working on a tool to put the characters in a canonical order. Uh, the search engine we use on Wiki is called Elasticsearch, and it comes with some support for a few dozen languages, and these can be customized, which we have done in a few cases. Um, over the last few years, I've added stemming support for several more languages, mostly by adapting existing open source stemming software. I was able to add stop words and elision support for Mirandese, which is a language spoken in Portugal, because I was able to work with a volunteer in that community. So in summary, we have tools that we can customize like normalization, stop words, and elision, plus open source tools that we can adapt like stemmers. And sometimes we can build new tools like the Khmer reordering, depending on how difficult the problem is that we're trying to handle. For me, a really big factor in the prioritization and success of a project to improve language processing for search is having a volunteer who knows the language and is willing and able to work with me. So I, I always ask people to tell me why their search sucks uh, in their language. Uh, my slides and notes are on Common, and there's a link on Commons, and there's a link on Wiki. I've included links to a longer video presentation on how search works, and a series of blog posts that go into even more depth, and a few other resources. Um, so we've got lots of time for questions right now, and you can always on, contact me on uh, on Wiki or by email. So, do we have any questions? All right, I see one here. Um, so. Uh, do you want me to read the question or? Uh, yeah, uh, go ahead. <laughs> okay. So I see a question here for languages that don't have nice built-in support plugins in our search platform. How can the volunteers contribute to it? Send words, send grammar, morphology rules, et cetera. And how can people contribute improving improvements to existing plugins? Um, uh, so it depends on the situation. Uh, definitely if you have like for example, a list of stop words, that's something relatively easy to configure. Um, or if there's a lesion, again, like with Mirandese, that was pretty straightforward. Um, uh, you can definitely open a fabricator ticket uh, and tag me on it. Um, and then, you know, those are relatively straightforward to configure. Um, for existing plugins, it depends on whether or not we have access to the code and whether we support them. Um, some of them are, you know, the ones that come from uh, Elastic that are available with Elasticsearch, we can customize those. So it depends on exactly what the situation is there. Uh, and we have definitely, um, one of the things that we've done a lot of work with is trying, or I keep, I want to eventually do it for everything, but I haven't yet, is uh, change the, the with the dealing with the diacritics. Uh, so originally in Swedish, we had a problem because all the, all the diacritics were being stripped out, which is the wrong thing to do in Swedish. You want to strip out the ones that have nothing to do with Swedish, but keep the ones that, that do. Um, for morphology and grammar type stuff, uh, we really need sort of existing software with a good license that we can adapt. Um, it's very there's no, really no good way to implement directly uh, uh, morphology uh, for a stemmer. So I guess if you had a, a very clear set of rules, you know, that were straightforward that we could adapt. Um, I know people have adapted, created plugins based on papers that, that do that kind of thing. Um, basically, if you have an idea, uh, email me, open a fab ticket, uh, and tag me on it. Um, let's see. 
So there's a few uh, more like comments sh sharing mm -hmm. ideas, which might be interesting to see what your reactions there are. But there's also one question coming up. So okay, um, uh, let me let me. Put you muted yourself. I have, but it was mostly so you can to shout out the question in the chat now. OK. Um, uh, so there's a, a note here that someone says, uh, Oracle recently named Wikipedia Search as one of the 25 greatest Java apps ever written. Um, uh, that's kind of funny because the Wikipedia Search is actually the layer that we control is actually written in PHP. Um, and is not one of the greatest uh, PHP apps ever written. That's very, it does a good thing. Um, Somebody's also commenting on a, on a website that uh, has the ability to, to find something if you give it a mutated form um, in Welsh, it looks like. Yeah, and that's um, uh, that's very cool and useful. So um, there's also a comment here. I have a list of stop words in, in Brett, and I never know how to pronounce that. Breton, Breton. <laughs> Uh, and I'm definitely interested, yes. It would be very easy to configure uh, a list of stop words if that would be helpful to the search there. Um, that's really straightforward. So um, We can connect you. Yeah. Um, and then uh, there's a question here that says, if it is a foreign JPEG, can English search find it? Um, if you mean on commons, I'm not quite sure what the context is there. Um, so that was a question on on YouTube if uh, from Roger. So Roger, if you can uh, elaborate a little bit on uh, what you're getting at, that would be helpful. But in the meantime, there's there are quite a lot of comments uh, cropping up on Etherpad. Thank you all, and I shall paste them now to the internal chat. So try you can see them. There's. There's two. There is one about the okay. corpora, and then another one about uh, tickets on public data. Yeah. So the um, says where do the corpora for generating stop word lists, stemming formulas come from? When we talk about minority languages, where do you where does one find search related tickets for my language in Fabricator? Um, <sighs> searching in Fabricator is always fun. Uh, <laughs> the I would just search for the name of the language. Um, if that's probably, if if there aren't a whole lot of tickets, you'll be able to find them. There probably there are a few um, search related tickets uh, for a few languages, but um, you can always open another one, and if pe someone will find that it's a duplicate and, and take care of it there. Um, so the corpora, you don't necessarily need corpora for stop words. Um, it certainly helps. You can do it. Usually, you can do a frequency. Um, analysis of a corpora and the things that are most common are often stop words, not always. Um, for Mirandese, uh, which is spoken in Portugal uh, and is a Romance language, we started with the list of Portuguese stop words, and uh, the the person who provided the list uh, actually translated that list. You know, thought about it, and it was a good place to to start. Um, stemming formulas. <laughs> uh, stemming can be really complicated uh, and depends on the language. Um, so I don't really have a good generic answer there. Um, uh, the easiest one that we've worked on was um, uh, Esperanto, which is, of course, very regular. Um, and so they actually had a uh, volunteer who wrote that, who didn't speak Esperanto, but was able to, you know, was a computer science undergrad who could um, just implement that because it's, it's very straightforward and very regular. Uh, I mean, like stemming in English is a disaster because English spelling is so crazy. and. Um, there are like gigantic libraries, and a lot of times you just have to list exceptions, and that's the only way to get things done. So it really depends on the language. Uh, if it's regular and there are big categories that can be handled easily by a few rules, then we can definitely figure out some way to implement those. Um, again, having existing software that with a good license, we have adapted things, we have translated things from other languages into Java, which is what the plugins are written in, and then you know wrap things uh, uh, into a plugin that we can use with Elasticsearch. There aren't uh, other comments coming in, although I think we actually do have a delay on the stream of about 20 seconds, so that's okay. a little more challenging. But 
I don't know if maybe it would be helpful for you to um, highlight again how people can get in touch with you. Uh, yeah, so uh, there's, yeah. there's my, on Wiki, I'm T. Jones WMF, uh, and then T. Jones at Wikimedia.org. Um, and if you, and you can tag me, um, I'm also T. Jones on Fabricator. Um, and uh, the discovery team, is, we're actually the search platform team, but we still use the former discovery team tags. Um, there is some, there's some uh, reactions on the on YouTube comments about how Fabricator is indeed very fun and uh, maybe a little bit of a uh, having a bit of barrier of entry to yeah. engaging with it. But. Um, I mean, the the point of Fabricator is sort of there for everyone, right? Uh, anyone can email me. I can't guarantee I'll be working here in ten years, uh, right? Um, so Fabricator or whatever bug tracking system we're using, um, but I'm totally happy to write the Fabricator tickets and put them into our workflow. Uh, if you contact me through email, if we can get things going. Um, Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much for 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 the openness, sharing in indeed the lightning speed uh, <laughs> your your work, and hopefully, uh, if others uh, find this helpful, they will use this opportunity to connect with you both to improve their language community and perhaps also your work at the same time. Yeah, so thank you very much again for uh, joining us from Washington. Yep, Washington DC, yeah. Amazing, thank you. Right. Enjoy the rest of your early afternoon, I'm guessing. <laughs> Something like that. Um, excellent. Okay. And, and thank so thanks again for joining. And we will actually uh, pivot straight into the closing remarks of the of the conference this being the last uh, presentation talk of the conference uh, I have uh, backstage with me uh, the other organizers of the conference who will um, show up here magically on stage with me uh, hello they've been lurking in the background this whole time and so <laughs> let me just let me just uh, take you through the uh, wrap up of the official part of the conference. We still have the all important quiz uh, starting in 40 minutes or so. So don't disappear yet. But let me just say a few words um, to wrap up the conference. So we will start with some slides from our amazing StreamYard stage manager, Richard. I, oh. <laughs> we're nearly there. Right, sorry. Coming up. There is, there's quite a few different screens that we want to be sharing with you for your entertainment. So many, many screens. It's a little bit more engineering than normal but uh just to get us started you'll see the, the first slide in a second but it starts with sending you to menti.com again <laughs> there you go um there is a question waiting there for you so um that's the web address menti.com and when you go there it will ask you for an access code which is 98 21 8 and uh, you'll have a few questions to uh, answer there I and we shall reveal the answers in a minute or so so please do go there now uh, I'm very interested to see what you're going to say uh, in the meantime let me just uh, talk you through a few things that are still remaining so uh, next slide so let me just talk a little bit, but uh, you can see the access code to Menti still uh, in the background. So uh, the conference is indeed almost over, um, but it's not it's not over over. There is the Twitter hashtag where you can 
share your reflections you can share the recording of your talk either live or, or recorded or anything else that you would like to share with others um, from the conference there is uh, of course all the documentation that we've been capturing uh, all the recordings like i said this morning all the live talks are already available in the replay uh, so you can have a look at that there's the etherpads with all the amazing capturing of the documentation thank you so much and all of that is in the main program uh, there is the telegram of course i believe we haven't really decided how long to keep it on for but definitely aren't going to be shutting it down the moment we finish the conference so please use it exchange ideas um, while it's still open and if there's anybody who still wants to share a picture of their mug, uh, please feel free to do that. And uh, now I shall reveal the results of our survey. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. So um, interesting, uh, there is a pretty strong feeling that people are happy that they're here. There is sort of an interesting spread of tiredness. So I'm quite happy to see that not everybody is completely wiped. There is, um, yeah, pretty in the middle. Some people are not tired at all. That's amazing. Those people should definitely come to the quiz. And uh, equally, there is a good amount of excitement for it. Some people aren't as as excited, but I think the people who are not tired should definitely come to the quiz. And there is um, some spread around like how well we're we're connected. But I, from the comments that I've seen on Telegram, we have made some connections and some new connections as well, which uh, warmed my heart. And uh, a pretty even spread about uh, people rating their stay in in Ireland. Rebecca, quite interesting to see. A strong peak at the end, but also some even even spread. So interesting. Uh, please feel free to carry on carry on voting. Uh, we'll see how the final results uh, shape up. But now uh, back to the presentation. And I think next slide. Perfect. So a lot of even more reflection time i think we've in the organizing team we we're already thinking how has the conference uh gone what's what did we like what what, what can we change but we would love to hear uh from you as well so um in the etherpad that we've been using for the opening and closing uh, we've left you some questions and it would be great to hear just your initial thoughts about what you liked and uh, what is like a memory that you'll remember from the conference and uh, what's maybe something interesting that you've learned. Hopefully there was something. I've heard that it's um, one way of remembering like training or a conference is by rem remembering the place that you were in so kind of online conferences are harder to remember but i still hope that uh, we have generated some good memories so uh, head over to that etherpad and we'll have a look at what you've written uh, later but for now uh, we would like to share some of our reflections with you uh, next slide so first of all just a huge thank you uh for the organizing team but also from the organizing team to to all of you you saw a fair bit of me and rebecca in this conference but uh you should also know that behind the scenes it was always either rebecca or richard organizing all the streams and youtube and all of that and leah has been working tirelessly to coordinate all the volunteers and also keep us all super informed and alert at all times on Telegram so that we all know what's happening and we don't get confused with the um, time zones. And John, between the people, um, I really love how everyone has been um, 
friendly and nice on various channels. I mean, I've been on the Celtic Knot since the beginning, um, and the crowd of the Celtic Knot has always been especially like super nice and understanding. And this um, online version was no exception. Um, I also really enjoyed how understanding you were regarding the experimental formats and all the small issues that you that we encountered. And um, yeah, uh, I want to say many, many thanks to people. And especially I want to name Owen because he's actually been doing most of the job of note taking. Um, thank you so much. Yeah. And I also want to thank um, our moderation crew that also took care that all the interactions uh, take place in a nice environment and especially that all the people get the information that uh, they need. And I really, really enjoyed all of the, yeah, all of the collaboration that took place on the channels, people starting editing Wikipedia articles, Wikidata directly during the first minutes of the conference. That was really amazing. So you're all amazing. Thank you. I just want to say you all that I'm look I'm watching this uh, on my phone as well, and yeah, it looks That's like we've broken, issue. like we've uh, yeah. our yeah. stream is broken. I'm not really sure if we're live or we're not live. Uh, I'll take a look at the YouTube stream there, and see what's up. Because it's because the, the stream is healthy as far as YouTube thinks. Oh, video is back now. Okay. I don't know what the delay is, but it broke just as Richard was talking about your highlights. So I'm afraid we've missed all of you. Uh, I'm just looking. If we change slides, we'll okay, know we whether we're live. We're live. Okay. We're live again. Apparently, uh, the main question now is what? At what point did did it break? And if it break. If it broke at Richard, then I would gladly it broke at Richard my part again. Because they said that they, they don't know what his highlights were. But not many people are back in the stream. All right, then anyway, let's wait a few there. minutes and Richard can start again, I guess. Uh, I I'll think... go super quick. Oh, they're back. Um, yeah, let's, the videos let's were start. excellent and the incubator <laughs> especially interesting. Yeah, no, we're... We're, you're back. We're, we're still talking about highlights. Leah, so sorry. You said so many lovely things, but I think it's best if yes, you go. I'm again. happy to tell them again. Absolutely. So I want to thank um, the moderation crew that did a great job at um, sharing information, make sure that no one was lost and making sure that everything stays nice and friendly. And um, I wanted to thank all the participants for being like super friendly with each other, very helpful, answering each other's question. Um, big shout out to people who took notes um, of all the sessions and especially to Owen. Thank you so much. You've been doing most of the job. I really enjoyed all the collaboration that took place immediately since the very first minutes of the conference, like people starting editing Wikipedia, creating new articles, translating them. This kind of energy has always been there at the previous Calignot conference and this remote um, version has no exception. And I also mentioned um, that uh, you've been super patient and understanding during technical issues, such <laughs> as the one that we apparently just had. And everyone has been keeping smiling and not being mad at us or anything. So thank you for that. And thank you for letting us know in the comments we are stuck in this streaming box so it's quite hard to know what's happening outside and we were just talking blissfully away sharing our comments whilst uh, the stream was broken but uh, we're back and just to share one more highlight from me i uh i was quite worried i'll miss the connection and feeling like there are people at this event but uh thanks especially i think to telegram and people commenting and sharing photos i felt like i'm here with with people some some new and some old friends so this was wonderful for me and uh we just wanted to quickly show what you've shared so far on etherpad but please keep the uh reflections coming so we will switch around the screen now 
so yeah, the hummus made a big, big uh, entrance that was on the that was on Telegram. Um, Maltese uh, meetup was was fun. I heard as well, and it was it was such such a funny coincidence. It, they always have it at this time, but it just so happened to be shortly after uh, their talk. There was oh awesome! Somebody learned uh, Wikidata templates. That's really cool. Uh, videos amazing please please keep uh writing those that will be a great uh, memory for us and a record of the conference um but uh not everything is uh, quite finished yet let me tell you about the social event that's uh happening in just under half an hour so yeah next slide Yeah, next. So um, this is a bit different than the whole time. Uh, we will have a quiz uh, on Google Meet. And what's exciting about that is uh, we will be able to see each other there, like actual faces, um, which should be super cool. Um, you, We believe from our research that you don't need a Google account to join this. You just click the link, and you should be in there um so that's something to say oh and also a uh, soft launch uh the social is run by Jan harald who is from wikimedia norway and wikimedia norway is going to be hosting our next celtic knot conference we haven't made any noise about this yet but this is something that's uh hopefully in the works and if we are able to have an in-person event by next year, that's where it should be. We're traveling far north. So just a little bit more info about the quiz. Uh, next slide. So uh, you can come to the quiz to actually enjoy the quiz, but there's one extra thing happening. We are going to attempt taking a group screenshot, group photo at the start of the quiz. Uh, if you would like to be included in the photo, but aren't really interested in the quiz, please still come and then you can join. Uh, you can leave straight after. If you are interested in the quiz but don't want the photo, uh, please come. Uh, we will, I think, only uh, screenshot people with a video so you can just turn off the video and you won't be included. Uh, so hopefully that's fine. Uh, just one or two more things to say. We will, of course, have a feedback form. So that's the next slide. Um, there is. We are just uh, broadcasting the link to the to the feedback here. But if you registered on Eventbrite for the conference, uh, you either already have or will have shortly a link in your mailbox for the for the uh, survey. Or um, or you can use this this link. Um, I heard some feedback. People were complaining that they didn't receive any uh, conference swag. Uh, when they arrived at the conference. But uh, if you fill in the survey, uh, we will send you a little gift in the post. So please do that. And that only leaves me to say a few more thanks. So uh, that's the last slide. Yes, thank you. Thank you to the speakers, to all the volunteers in the background, to the organizing team the speakers who braved live stream with us. This was a new experience for us and also new for many of the speakers. So I am very grateful that everybody was up for experimenting with us. Uh, also, thank you for those who recorded the, their talks. That was also often the first experience for them and quite new for us. Uh, we've learned a lot about YouTube in the last few days. So thank you for learning along with us. Um, Huge thank you to all of the volunteers in the background. It's like a group of 20 people almost doing moderation, organization, uh, heralding, and all that stuff, which I feel uh, made it for a smooth conference and a conference with a really nice uh, atmosphere. And uh, I guess thank you to my organizing colleagues who, who uh, together decided that we will uh, deliver an online conference, despite not having much experience with this. So 
thank you to you all. And of course, thank you for everybody who came and also decided to experience an online conference, which like we said, can be tiring, but hopefully it was also something worthwhile. And yes, thank you Owen for doing all the amazing um, text capturing. I have no more, that's the thanks that I had. I don't know, any more thanks, colleagues? <laughs> over, over we, to you. We covered everyone, didn't we? I certainly I don't, yeah, someone. Well, um, I don't know, but uh, I had a great time at this conference and I felt almost like I'm at Celtic Knot. So I think that was awesome. And uh, nothing more to say really, apart from seeing, uh, looking forward to seeing you at the quiz on Google Meet in about 20 minutes. Anything else to say? See you at the quiz, really. you all, and anybody that belongs to the Cuteness Association, uh, that one is for you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Hope you had a great conference. Bye. <laughs> and yes, we shall uh, leave the stream live for a little bit, as always.